Fallout 4 gives you tons of ways to help aid you on your journey across the Commonwealth. One of those being action points. You can use them to target certain limbs and vats or use them to sprint. But what if you wanted to skip all of that and just do your own thing? Can you beat Fallout 4 without action points? Here are the rules for the challenge and without further ado, let's get into it. I started by making my character a beautiful lady, and then decided to do beautiful lady things until the vault tech rep came and I could set my stats. Easy peasy. Uh, luck is three for bloody mess. Uh, we can't do anything into endurance or agility. Okay, so that knocks those out. Um, I don't think I've... Mm, we'll go charisma really high then. And then, I don't think we need anything in perceptions. We'll go five here. And five here. JK, I don't know how we got to seven, but that's okay. There's no actual build in mind. It's literally just get to the end of the game. So with 10 charisma, we can just pass every single speech check. Uh, we can get our companions to do a lot of the damage because that's not illegal. And we can use strength to carry a little bit more stuff. Seven for intelligence so we can get more uh, experience points. And uh, we're just going to call this Take It Slow. After that, the end of the world came. But instead of running and panicking, I took a pleasant stroll to the vault's entrance and surprisingly didn't die to a premature explosion. Thanks, Todd, for giving me enough time. Then, once I jumped out of my own freezer, we could start the run. And since I wasn't restricted by weapons this time, I absolutely destroyed the rad roaches in the vault. Some got smacked, and some got blasted into a million little rad roach pieces. You know, normal beautiful lady behavior. And with what was possibly the fastest I've ever made it out of this vault, I went to Sanctuary, and since I didn't need to make anything for the run, I went straight to Concord to break the Minutemen out of jail. However, since I also wasn't restricted on companions this time, I also grabbed dog meat to make the travels a little bit more enjoyable. That is until we got to Concord, and got to work unaliving raiders. While here, I leveled up and took Bloody Mess and Black Widow for my first two perks. Since nearly every enemy in this game is a man, I figured the extra damage from both perks would go a long way. I cleared through the rest of the museum and met up with Preston and the gang. They said they still had raiders outside, and normally I would leave this for the Brotherhood to steal later in the run, but why wait for the Brotherhood when I could be the Brotherhood? Once the Minutemen were sorted, I then started on my way to Diamond City. Along the way, I shot up a diner and got the inspirational perk to make my companions do more damage, because you can never have enough damage in runs like these. Once I got there, after a fairly uneventful walk, I went and harassed Ellie for money and then headed towards Nick Valentine. Along the way, I took the medic perk for increased healing and then decided to take on the trigger men. But to be honest, this wasn't that rough of a time. Between my 10mm starter pistol and a submachine gun I found, I just took my time and took out the Triggermen one by one. Not having weapon restrictions is the absolute best. I moved further in and freed Nick and then we tore through the rest of the Triggermen. The best part is that since these guys dropped the ammo I'm using, it basically means I can never really run out. But then we got to Skinny Malone. And this time, instead of just shooting up the place, I talked my way out of the fight and Nick and I were able to make it out scot-free this time. Once Nick and I were back in town, I dressed up to be like my best friend and we went to go kicking Kellogg's house to get the quest to go to Fort Hagen. But while I was heading up to the house, Dogmeat broke space and time. I didn't even notice this while playing, I only just saw this while typing up the script. But after we got our quest to head out, Nick and I strolled through the Commonwealth as two detectives trying to find a missing boy. Only for us to get the shit kicked out of us by some ghouls in a trailer park. We continued until we got to the fort, but sadly I had to change my clothes. I'm sorry Nick, but the trench coat offers no protection from laser weapons, so I can't cosplay as you anymore. Inside I gave Nick a minigun, and honestly the extra damage and bullet casings were a welcome addition to the run. But for once, I don't really have to say about Fort Hagen. Nick and I cleared out all the opposing synths, and Kellogg didn't stand much of a chance when we got to him. For once, there were no shenanigans. So after Kellogg was a warm slump on the floor, I ripped out his brain and sent an embarrassing email from his computer. Then we made our way to Good Neighbor to do some brain diving. It 
went about as much as you'd expect it to. Nothing too crazy to report, but now I had to traverse the Glowing Sea to find Virgil again. But before heading out into the Glowing Sea, I stopped by Diamond City to offload some gear and buy the Old Faithful Laser Pistol from Arturo. It does double damage when the enemy is at full health, so I couldn't pass it up. But then came the Great Journey, a trip that actually has some pretty landscape if you don't rush past it, or if the giant rad scorpions don't decide to try and test your might. What's that? You wanted to walk in peace through the glowing sea? How about a trailing pack of ghouls to spice things up? After enough detours and roadblocks, I made it to Virgil and he explained how the rest of the run would carry out. Honestly, the radiation must be doing this guy wonders because not only is he a super mutant with a human way of thinking, but he can also predict the future! Nick and I headed over to Green Tech Genetics and got to work dealing with the gunners inside. Close quarters combat and tons of laser rounds were used, but for the most part we just strolled through as normal. That is until we made it to the Courser. Since I didn't have a fat man this time, I had to use whatever I had mainly being Molotovs and a laser pistol, but I accidentally used a gun bash which uses AP, so I had to reset the fight. And to be honest, I'm glad I did. Did you know there's a fat man in the room with the Courser? I didn't, but once I found it, the fight went just like any other. With the Courser chip in hand, I made my way over to the railroad and got them to decipher it, and then reported back to Virgil for the teleporter plans. Now I just had to ally myself with a faction. And by ally, I meant unalive the poor person Preston sent me to go help and then come back and get promoted. Now I could finally construct the teleporter and get inside the institute. I made my way to father and pledged to join his cause. I was gonna do the railroad, I swear I was gonna do a different ending this time, but the ending for the railroad in Minutemen is almost exactly the same, so why not pick the ending with the most combat for a character with only one endurance? So after meeting up with some scientists, I was sent to help a courser capture a synth among a boat community. But on the way there, Nick and I got into a shootout with robot racers. The stuff you see when you can't just run past everything is actually wild. Finally arriving at the rendezvous point, our group got busy taking out raiders and moving along the boats. Only for me to fall off and nearly drown and die of radiation simultaneously. So, rather than waste my resources, I left my power armor at the bottom of the ocean and continued in a dead man's outfit. Making it to the main boat, I found a legendary shotgun I couldn't use last run and was determined to show it off this time. We made it to the synth, posing as a sea captain, and I seduced him to sleep, but still had to take out his companions. After a successful mission, I was immediately sent back out again. But now I was fighting major factions and not just raiders. Now, up until this point when I got perk points, I didn't really have any options to spend them on due to level or challenge restrictions, so I maxed out intelligence and took the Nerd Rage perk. I've never used it before, but got a really good example of why you should always use this perk. But sadly, Nick was not a fan of me leading synths against the Brotherhood and decided to betray our cause, so one of the synths had to gun him down with a Gatling laser. But with that out of the way, I got to finally use my perk. Bruh, this is my favorite fucking perk, are you serious? Nerd Rage is insane. <laughs> oh my god. It's so obnoxious, dude. Later inside, I seduced some more synths and then headed back to Father. He told me I was next in line of his demise, and I got a course to replace Nick for my travels. So now it was time to bring about the end of the world. At least for the Brotherhood of Steel on the Railroad. First up was securing a super battery from the Brotherhood. We obliterated their greeting party and then rode an elevator while taking out the opposition. And I even got to use the Nerd Rage perk again. Bro, I love this perk. Oh my god. This thing is sweet! 
Next came a radiation bath, collecting a battery, and a fight with some robots. But with my homies at my side, this was easy. And to make it even more of a disgrace for the Brotherhood, we even defended a counter invasion in the opening room. And it was only a matter of time before they got to experience true humiliation. But before I could give it to them, I sorted out a hostage situation and recruited Casper to the cause. Then came a radio setup and turning on the super battery. I chatted with the homies and now it was time to destroy some factions. But let's be honest, the railroad didn't stand a chance. These guys got absolutely rinsed. But now after getting the approval for the final assault, the Brotherhood did put up much more of a fight. I blew up some generators to allow my synths to join me in my conquest and showed the Brotherhood why you don't mess with the Institute. Then we had to try and hijack Liberty Prime, but this proved rather easy as the Brotherhood couldn't rush in to stop us because they would get blasted. So we stole their big robot and shot down their mothership. Now if only I had some s'mores. I can't remember the last time I had a good s'more since moving to Australia. But all that was left to do was to visit Father once more and take what was rightfully mine. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we beat the run without using action points. I gotta say, this run was strange. Not being able to sprint felt weird, but I also got to see and do more things than I normally would have, and I feel like overall it was a lot more fun this way. I would easily recommend this run to anyone, as I had a pretty good time. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, and if you have a challenge run you'd like to see me attempt, make sure to leave a comment down below. I play all sorts of games, so I'm game to try anything. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any new videos, and I'll see you on the next one.